It's Peter Zellum's Greeny Flix Adventure 8. I'm using a Nikon Z6, but I'm using a manual Voigtlander 35mm 1.4 lens. So what's so unusual about this setup? Well, I don't have an assistant, so no one is actually making the change in focus. But something's happening and something's changing the focus on the manual lens to make it automatic. What is it? That's what today's video is about. Let's find out more about this automatic focus function on a manual M mount lens. Well, I must admit, putting an autofocus function on a manual lens was something that I didn't even think was important, to tell you the truth, because I enjoyed having my automatic lenses on my F-mount Nikons and my Z automatic lenses, autofocus lenses on my Z-mount Nikons. And I enjoyed using my old manual lenses on the F-mount Nikons and also my, the manual lenses on my Leica. But to put manual lenses onto the Z and make them auto, uh, auto focus, I thought, well, that's an interesting novelty. So that's where I had an opportunity to actually um, do a product review on the Megadap Z mount to M mount adapter to make manual lenses automatic. A novel concept, and I was trying to work out what's the use case for it, and now I found my first one, which is making videos. It's great actually using these other type of lenses, so the 35 1.4, which gives you that narrow depth of field so you can blur the background and everything and make the video a bit more artistic. I've noticed a few other things that the automatic focus mechanism of the adapter does, and that is actually it can change the minimum focus distance of the M mount lenses. The normal minimum focus distance of an M mount lens is 0.7. But because of this automatic focus mechanism, which actually can pull the lens forwards and backwards, it can actually go right down. So I'm probably, I'd say about 0.4 here. I'll go to about 0.3. What happens then? Can do it? Not sure. But if I come back a bit. So that's about 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And then the normal minimum focus would be about here, which is about arm's length for this type of lens. So, good idea. So far, actually, I'm liking the idea. Now, I might have mentioned earlier, if not, um, being an autofocus mechanism, and there is a winding mechanism to pull the lens in and out, much there as there is in the F-mount Nikon and also in the Z-mount lenses. The, what we all know now is that the Z-mount lenses are basically silent. So when you put them on the camera, you don't hear any noise as such. Uh, the F-mount lenses, you do hear the noise and therefore with the F-mount lenses uh, from Nikon, um, having a radio mic is work is great because then you don't the mic on the camera doesn't pick up all the noise from the lens the same applies with this adapter if you want to use the adapter for video then it's best to use a radio mic of some kind just so you can separate the motor noise of the um, adapter to the main video and not be distracted by that two main benefits um, with the with the autofocus is for video you can use these magnificent lenses that give you a shallow depth of field and give you that really nice artistic uh, aspect. And also it, it reduces your minimum focus length that you can now focus. So you can, normally you'd need to have get, get a macro adapter on the Leica lenses, on the M-mount lenses in order to bring the focus point closer. Well, this achieves the same thing, which is an added bonus. I wasn't expecting that. So first observations, it's designed to make a manual lens an automatic focus lens by moving the lens forward and backwards from the center, which makes it autofocus. Much the same as the Nikon FTZ adapter, the lower part of the adapter actually does go beyond the base here. You can actually see that it 
true to probably about six millimeter. If you're trying to fit it onto a tripod mount here, you'll need an extension with a small foot. Otherwise, the foot, the basic foot of the tripod will interfere with the adapter, as you can see here. Unlike the FTZ adapter, there is no tripod mount on the base of the adapter. So I'm recording the sound with my iPhone here, and then we're just gonna sync it with the video. And that way I should be able to eliminate the noise that's made by the autofocus mechanism on the adapter. Okay, so how's my focus handling? Uh, I'm using the 90 millimeter F2. Simicron lens, I think it is. How's it handling the focus? If I come back over here, what do you reckon? It's still handling the focus okay? And I guess the great thing about the 90mm lens, it sort of compresses your subject. And then depending on how the subject moves around, um, it can still maintain focus. Hopefully it's doing a reasonable job. Yeah, there you go. Let's have a closer look what's inside the box. Then we can have a look at some of the lenses, the five lenses that I have, the M-mount lenses, and we'll see how they attach. Obviously I like using my Leica camera, but I like using my Z6 Nikon as well. Um, the advantage of the Leica system is that you can get small lenses, high quality small lenses. And at this stage, you can get high quality lenses for the Z series, but they tend to be of a larger size. F-mount lenses also tend to be quite large. That's the reason for putting these small lenses on the Nikon. So you get all the new technology and functionality of the Nikon, and there's some advantages there with the in-body image stabilization as opposed to what uh, the Leica M240P can offer. So I want to put these lenses on there. Uh, I can do that with the manual adapter, but now I've got an additional advantage by using an autofocus adapter. Let's have a look what's inside the box. It arrives in a nice box. It's similar to, I suppose, the type of boxes you get from Apple and also these magnetic boxes that open up. I guess it's similar to Leica as well, just keeping that same flavor, I suppose. There are some instructions. There's a warranty card, instructions. Very little English, a little bit of English there, but basically everything is in Mandarin. If you can read Mandarin, that's fine. If not, you have to sort of work out from the images I'm guessing it says don't touch the sensor, don't put dust inside the camera, uh, line up the dots when you're actually mounting, showing you where to put the adapter relative to the lens and the camera. So that's all pretty straightforward. There are some settings here, and this is to do with the metadata that's actually recorded in the camera. Uh, where the website is that you have to uh, go to and there is an English version of the instructions so that's all pretty straightforward. Continue with the unpacking and then there's nothing much in here other than just the adapter and there it is just relative size let's take off these covers To move, remove this one, you press that little knob down and then you can take that out. So the mount is actually there, as you can see. And it's this mount here that would slide up and down like this, which then changes the focus. And all your motor mechanism and all your electronics are in there. There is a connecting port there so that you can update the firmware to this as and when necessary. As a, a relative comparison, here's the Nikon FTZ adapter. So your F mount Nikon lens will go there and that, that's a Z mount to the actual camera. So they look pretty similar. Um, the other main difference is that with the FTZ adapter you do have a tripod mount. These are all the lenses that I want to try out and see whether they actually do work with the adapter. Depending on how you take this uh, adapter off your lens and at what stage, this mount here can be fully retracted down 
or could be fully extended up. So right now it's about four millimeters or three millimeters down from the front face here. Uh, if it's extended fully up, it would probably be another three or four millimeters above the face. So that's how you know where the position is. So all these lenses I want to try out. Okay, so the first one. So all we do is just line up the dots and then we put that on and you can see that it fits, it's fine. The lens clears all this mechanism here and everything works normal. All right, so that one fits. And we'll do 21 millimeter. Line up the red dots again. All right, so the thing to look out for here is we've got the little thumb tag here on the focus with this particular lens and it when this mount is fully retracted inside the adapter you can see that you've got a clearance of about one to two millimeters maybe one and a half millimeters between the base of the adapter and this thumb uh, attachment to the focus so even when you set it on infinity here we've still got clearance between the thumb tag and the main body there. So this lens will operate fine. Okay, now the Voigtlander, let's have a look how that fits. So lining up the dots. All right, so the first thing we notice here is that the thumb tag here is much further down into the body, closer to the mount. And you can see that it disappears inside the mount here. But there is a clearance. There's a clearance of about a millimeter. And you can see it rotates within there without interfering with the mount. So the Voigtlander 35 1.4 is fine to fit onto the mount. Okay, so far so good. Three out of three. All right, so now we've got the Leica 35 1.4. Lining up the dots and let's see what happens. Okay, also good. So here you've got about two to three, probably three millimeters clearance between the focus ring thumb tab, finger tab, and the body of the adapter. So that's also fine. Four out of four. All right, we'll try and put this on and guess what? The 50 millimeter with the thumb tag here or finger tag won't fit um, but this won't go on because the lens is actually sitting on an angle like this because of this thumb tag finger tag on the focus ring interfering with that it interferes by you can see just by by a millimeter or two onto that. So we can't use the 50mm f1.4 Sumalux Leica lens with this adapter, which is a pity because this is probably one of the most popular lenses in the Leica range that everyone swears about. This is you often use as a reference by which to judge the quality of other lenses, both Leica and other manufacturers it won't fit onto there with that thumb tag. There will be other Leica 50 millimeter lenses that don't have that thumb tag and then you'll be fine, that will fit. That finger thumb tag interferes with that. All right, and the 90 millimeter F2.0. Let's see how that fits. That's also fine. On the focus ring, it's way out here anyway. There is no thumb tag on it, so that it, there's nothing to interfere with that. All right, well, that's it. So, out of all my lenses, out of my six M mount lenses, the only one that's not going to work with this adapter is this one here, the 50mm f1.4. The 35s, the 21, the 15, and the 90 all work fine, all will work with the adapter. 
Well, I hope you found this interesting. I think it's a great product. Um, it will add to my lens collection and adapter collection, and it will be used, I think, mainly for my videos. And it, I think I might even use it as when I'm only carrying one lens, because then it helps me get to those really close focuses. So if I'm using, for example, the 35 1.4, whether it be the Leica or whether it be the Voigtlander, um, if I need to take something really close up, then by putting on the adapter, I can do those close ups, which is great. I'll probably do some more on this as I discover different ways of using it. I hope you found this video interesting. I will continue to use this. There will be some more videos on this. Um, do like if this is of use to you, really appreciate that. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, do subscribe also. I look forward to seeing your next video. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.